Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, guys, I guess I'm going to do the hello for everybody. What do you think? Oh, hey, Manny. Been, been, hey, wait, been waiting for you for a half hour now. <laughs> I just woke up. Hey, I'm an old guy, you know? Yeah. Give me a break. Listen, Manny, uh, it's good to see you again. It's it's Manny Pacheco movie day. That's, a, that's the way I think of this. And, uh, of course, Halloween is right around the corner. So Ooh. I think the perfect movie is Halloween. Halloween 1, Halloween 2, Halloween 50. There's so many of them. What do you think? Uh, <laughs> what? Uh, what? You're in the wrong generation, John. What? You, you, tell me, you're, you're, you skipped a couple of generations, you're, and you're with your grandkids. Act one. We, we're, we're celebrating Act 2 over here. You're <laughs> celebrating Act 1. Right. <laughs> or, or point five. How can a movie named Halloween not be... The perfect movie. Yeah, but this is well, forgotten, forgotten Hollywood. Well, I agree that Halloween, the, the name Halloween fits perfect, and you get your share of monsters from that genre. You get Mike, Michael Myers from Halloween and Freddy Cougar from Nightmare on Elm Street and Jason Voorhees from uh, Friday the 13th. But, you know, really, you, you have to go way back in time to really look at some of those go-to movies, uh, you know, families like to see on, on Halloween and um, let me let me take you way back uh, to the uh, 1930s, you know, with the Universal Monster films. I mean, that's that's where you, where I would begin. Oh, sure. Mm. They were now those those are classics. I have to agree. Right. Oh, I, I, black comedy, you know, really, really sharp, edgy comedy that uh, that, that that they would call horror. And I mean, you know, it starts with, of course, Frankenstein. But, but truth be told, six months before Frankenstein was released. Uh, they actually released uh, Bela Lugosi's Dracula. So Dracula mm. actually started the genre, but everybody thinks it starts with Frankenstein. Really? Back, Dracula, the, my favorite line is, the children of the night, what the music they make. That's a great line, isn't it? I love Classic. it. And, you know, Universal so, was real savvy. They really wanted to groom Bela Lugosi as, uh, as their monster uh, du jour. Yeah. Uh, Bela was a very good-looking man. Uh, was on Broadway and didn't fancy himself as what you call uh, a monster. So uh, he poo-pooed the idea of doing Frankenstein. And so they had to turn to another actor and they turned to one of the most gentle, kindest, um, sweetest man you could ever, ever select to play a monster. And that was Boris Karloff. In real life, mm. he was a gentle, sweet soul whose hobby was horticulture. Are, are you telling me that Bella Lugosi was the first choice for Frankenstein. Yes, I, I thought you misspoke when you were said Frankenstein. I thought you were talking about Dracula. He was the first choice over. I can't because picture Dracula anybody. Was so, Dracula was so popular. That's why. Oh, I, mm. because I can't picture anybody other than Karloff. Right. Well, now. I mean, he well, is the. There were Frankenstein. there were a lot of there were a lot of sequels to the original Frankenstein, and and truth be told. A Bride of Frankenstein was played by Boris Karloff. Son of Frankenstein was played by right. Boris Karloff. But then you get to uh, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. And, and lo and behold, guess who's playing Frankenstein in that movie? Bella Lugosi. Hmm. Oh, and, yeah. And then there's the ghost of Frankenstein and there's others. And, and all of a sudden, Lon Chaney is playing Frankenstein. And then by the time you get to Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein, you have, <laughs> you have Glenn Strange. You know... I got to tell you, John, you can laugh, but let me just say a couple of things about that. <laughs> Abbott and Costello meets Frankenstein was the most successful, the biggest money making horror film in the history of Universal Monster Pictures. Number really? one. Really? Absolutely. It, it, it was huge. It was just a monster of a picture. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> it had everything. It, it had, had the it laughs different. and it had the scary and it had uh, I'm sure it had a pretty girl in danger, you know. Oh, absolutely. I always have a pretty girl in danger. Yeah. And, and, and you had the comedy of, of, of Abbott and Costello. But let's not get too ahead of our skis here. Uh, you know, but, 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 you know, these universal monster movies were also good for another reason. I mean, it's very easy to go to Bela Lugosi and, and, and Boris Karloff and even Lon Chaney playing the Wolfman. But they had a great supporting cast uh, headed by the remarkable Dwight Fry, who was Renfield. You know, the oh, bug yes. In Dracula, he was also Fritz, 
in the original Frankenstein. There is no Igor. The real Igor is in Son of Frankenstein with Bela Lugosi. And uh, also the remarkable Mar uh, Maria Ospenskaya, who plays the gypsy woman in, uh, in The Wolfman. And she was it, good. She, I, I, I can't believe that she was a Russian director of acting. She really taught acting for much of her career. To me, she looks like a gypsy. She was that good. Yeah. She and, you was. know, it, great character too. Yeah, I know. So these these real uh, supporting characters. Uh, don't don't forget also the the movie makers Jack Pierce with the makeup, fabulous makeup that he created. We, when we think of Frankenstein, we don't think of the Mary Shelley book. We think of the Frankenstein makeup done by Jack Pierce. Same thing with the Wolfman. We think of the Lon Chaney Wolfman developed by Jack Pierce. Yeah, and you know, Manny, uh, in later generations, the makeup, not only the makeup uh, was copied, uh, I think of uh, um, Teenage Wolfman or something. What was that Michael J. Fox was in? Michael it, Landon. Oh, yeah. Though, yeah, Michael J. Fox later, but Michael Landon was one yeah. of the pieces. It's very similar, you know, really a copy of the original makeup because well, it, it had become an icon. You had to copy it. That is it. all Jack Pierce. I mean, he was yeah. fabulous. Yeah, but, but I also, uh, I I also think that there was a uh, uh, all those old movies, all those original nineteen thirties mm -hmm. um, monster movies were copied in homage. I think in later years, yeah. because they they did originally they did series, just as you mentioned, Frankenstein, Son of Frankenstein, you know, blah blah blah. Right. Well, so so did Hollywood. Uh, so did. Um, Mike Myers have three or four or ten, you know, and then talking about comedy and um, and uh, and the uh, Abbott and Costello. What do we end up with in later years? Is scary movie, right? Or comedy, you know. But how about how about television programs? The Adams Family and the Munsters. And what do they put Fred Gwynn in? The Jack Pierce uh, portrayal of Frankenstein. Yes, he looks yeah. just like the the character. So you you can't. You really cannot uh, under under tell the story of Jack Pierce. If you're going to tell this story, you got to tell Jack Pierce's story. And he was he was remarkable in in the creation. He also created, by the way, the uh, the, the the magic of the makeup for the Mummy, which was played by Boris Karloff. Wow. And he was also involved with the Invisible Man, which made Claude Rains a star. And you know, Claude Rains became a major star for Warner Brothers, but he actually started at Universal, appeared in the Invisible Man. And, well, maybe he maybe he appeared. You couldn't see him. <laughs> also, uh, you got to remember that uh, we had that wonderful uh, Claude Rains uh, appearance in The Wolfman. He plays the father of uh, Lawrence Talbot, who becomes the Wolfman. So Claude Rains is also part of that pantheon of great monsters uh, that's participants. That's fascinating. So, I would never uh, have thought. I mean, you're obviously accurate, but I would never have thought of Claude Rains in any monster movie. He was such a yeah. sophisticated actor in later years and doing, you know, great roles. And his great voice, which which was made, made him perfect for The Invisible Man. Now you move on to the, you know, the, the, the 1940s and into the 1950s. And uh, the 1950s, of course, loaded with great monster movies that are being showcased right now on Turner Classic Movies because they do that in the month of October. Uh, and you and you get those great Vincent Price, Christopher Lee, Peter Cushing uh, homages to Dracula and Frankenstein. And, of course, they love to showcase a haunted house. For yes. example, House on the Haunted Hill or uh, House on the Haunted Hill or or the Tingler. We had talked yeah. about the Tingler before we started. Yeah. Uh, so these, I have these, a I have a question for you, Maddie. The um, uh, and by the way, I want to uh, just divert for a moment because you talked a little bit about TV, uh, and uh, TV uh, uh, would not be complete without uh, in this genre of uh, Zach Marie and then uh, Dark Shadows, the uh, the soap opera, oh, which was absolutely really Dark terrific. Shadows. Yeah, <laughs> but in any event, in any event, uh, so I'm almost getting from you that be, uh, while there's a a, a series of very popular uh, uh, horror movies, if you will, for um, the Halloween season. Uh, now, back in the day, uh, in the forgotten days, uh, Halloween was not something that sparked making movies uh, 
as much as they are today. Maybe today it's addressing kids as opposed to uh, it was an occasional one-off uh, back back in the early Hollywood days. That is the one thing I, I do not like about the horror genre. We, today, we happen to compartmentalize everything. If you really want to see a good, you know, Bela Lugosi or, 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 uh, or Lon Chaney or, or, or Boris Karloff film or even Vincent Price or Christopher Lee, you have to wait till October. Why can't we run these, these fabulous movies year round? Why do we have to compartmentalize them as part of a Halloween package? I don't get that. They do it with Christmas. And uh, it's, it's frustrating because there's so many wonderful wonderfully great productions that were made uh, either at Universal with with those those wonderful actors or through Hammer Productions, the British entries that were done with Christopher Lee. And of course, the Vincent Price, I mean, he was he was like Claude Rains, a very sophisticated actor who appeared in wonderful uh, movies like Laura. He appeared in Laura right. and, and others. But he became a uh, he became a, a guru of of horror, and again, just like Boris Karloff, was a kind, gentle, funny man. I mean, the, the idea that these were um, these were actors that would um, that would be monsters. If you met them in real life, you just you wouldn't pin the whole horror genre on them. As a matter of fact. So popular was Boris Karloff by the 19, early 1960s to compete with The Outer Limits and, and Twilight Zone. Uh, uh, Boris Karloff hosted his own horror anthology called Thriller on television. So Boris Karloff, I mean, even he plays the Grinch. I mean, a Christmas movie, but he's playing basically kind of a monster for Christmas. So Boris Karloff spent his entire career trying to run away from the monster uh, persona. He wanted to do serious drama the same way that uh, Errol Flynn wanted to because he, he had been typecast as a swashbuckler. They weren't going to have it. Boris Karloff was going to stay a monster and he was typecast as that. And yeah. that's really a shame because he, he I think he was as talented an actor as they come and he could have done anything, anything yeah. at all. So, so uh, we're, uh, Halloween is approaching. Uh, this uh, episode we showed, uh, shown just before Halloween. Uh, of all the films, of all the years, forgotten or not so forgotten years, uh, if you had to sit down with one uh, movie for the Halloween, in the Halloween spirit of fright and what have you, uh, what would be, uh, I'll give you two, what would be uh, two favorites? Well, I'll, I'll give you one movie favorite, then I'll give you a surprise. How's that? Okay. Okay. Uh, the, the movie that I always end up watching on Halloween, because I'm not out trick-or-treating, <laughs> I, 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 I always watch Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. I, I think w when you get the Wolfman, Dracula, and Frankenstein all in one shot yeah. <laughs> with the comedy of Abbott and Costello, it, it's a perfect movie. It, it captures the whole uh, fun spirit of, of Halloween. Now, my second choice is the surprise. Uh, I have been known on Halloween to uh, go to YouTube or go to some sort of a downloadable um, uh, program or channel to listen to The War of the Worlds, the mm. uh, production that was created by Orson Welles. Sure. It was, in fact, a story that takes place on the eve of Halloween, what they call Halloween's Eve. And it's, of course, that great H.G. Wells story about how Martians attack, in this case, uh, New Jersey, and they spread across the country. And it scared half the, half the country, uh, maybe the entire country. And uh, Orson Welles uh, geniusly uh, created uh, a radio program for the ages, so successful that the station got in trouble, FCC got involved, Yep. And uh, CBS was almost sanctioned for for the effort, but it's a masterful look at uh, what you can do to, uh, in an audio way, really highlight uh, the boo factor yeah. <laughs> of Halloween. Yeah. So, I, yes. I, you know, it's interesting. I think we all love a good scare. Mm -hmm. I agree. I think a good scare is 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 fun. I mean, and 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 kids love it. Believe oh, it or yeah. not. Yeah, but, oh, I, yeah. But, but I always find out that uh, whatever's happening in life, uh, if I get a good scare, uh, I like to go to uh, a place that is calm and happy. And that place uh, uh, would be ForgottenHollywood.com. What can we find there? <laughs> Wow, that was a long reach for a tease, yeah. but I'll take it. <laughs> 
ForgottenHollywood.com if you like to read blogs. I've written many blogs about Halloween and, of course, the, the actors. As a matter of fact, in my books, I do a chapter in my, my second book, Son of Forgotten Hollywood, Forgotten History, my favorite chapter of all the 56 stories I've told. And I do tell the story of Lon Chaney and the Chaney family. The father, of course, was the legendary Lon Chaney, as opposed to Lon Chaney Jr., uh, the, the, the actor who played uh, the Wolfman. And what a remarkable, loving family they were. And they still, to this day, protect the memory of both father and son. And um, so you, if you'd like to read that and many of my other chapters, you can go to Amazon for the entire Forgotten Hollywood book series. Well, that's great. Thank you. You bet. See you soon. And, oh, Manny, I, I have one closing word for you and Art. Boo! <laughs> yeah, I... Don't don't give up your day job, John. <laughs> because you're so good at it. That was wonderful. Thank you, Manny. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.